Hi everyone, I'm Eleanor. Welcome or welcome back. Today is the 30th day of August, which means it's the 30th day of the Sealy Challenge, the penultimate day. It's pretty damn exciting. Uh, the sun's a bit different in the kitchen at the moment because the angle's changing. We're going into, slowly, we're going into spring uh, here in Sydney. And also there's a guest appearance from Augustus, my greyhound, who is a huge, huge contemporary poetry fan. So, why am I filming early and how is this different from all the other days? I have been a little bit busier than anticipated and I'm going to be busy this evening. So I thought I'd quickly get this in. Now, how did this day start? It started with me picking up this brand new book that I, I bought as soon as it came out called Queer Nature, a Poetry Anthology. So it's an anthology of all different poets. Um, they're all uh, queer poets and they, are, they all have something unique to say about nature. So of course I didn't read all of this. <laughs> I had a break um, for about half an hour during the day and I sat with a coffee and read maybe four or five uh, poems. But first I went through the index and what I found was another fantastic thing that happens with the Sealy Challenge is that you suddenly have names of poets that you're familiar with. Yes, you've only read their book for that one day briefly and albeit superficially, I admit. But at the same time, you're familiar with them and it was almost like going to a reunion, you know, and I started writing them down. You know, I, I was like, oh my gosh, hi, Jericho Brown. It's like, hi, oh, just Charles. Hey, how are you? And then there was, uh, let's see, Franny Choi, Henri Cole, who was sort of in the corner with a whiskey. I was a bit intimidated to go after him, but he was really lovely. Carl Phillips, who gave me a huge hug. Justin Philip Reed, who I was in awe of, and I was like a total fangirl. Dennis Smith, Dennis Smith who had organized, you know, the whole, the whole get together. Okay, but back to reality, it is really lovely to see all those amazing poets in the one place. And then among, and so amongst them, all these other poets that I had heard of, but mostly not. Another thing that happens with the Sealy Challenge is, you know, when you, when you meet all, when you, meet all those poets again here, they also have maybe in the past introduced you to poets who've shown up here. So for example, I came across a poem called The Lovers by James Merrill. And I was like, oh, so I turned to Henri, um, was it Henri Cole? Yes, to Henri Cole. And I was like, didn't you? And he's like, oh yes, I forgot I was going to introduce you. It's like Eleanor, James, James, Eleanor. You feel like you're part of a community. Um, okay, it's in my imagination, but still. So I absolutely loved the James Merrill poem. On the page facing the James Merrill poem, I'll get it up for you actually. Oh, this book is still so brand new, I love it. So I immediately read the James Merrill poem, right? Because it came highly recommended by Mr. Cole. And then, sitting with him was Edna St. Vincent Millay. I mean, you just, I mean, it's, how can you not read it? So here, here it goes, Sonnet 11. I shall forget you presently, my dear. So make the most of this, your little day, your little month, your little half a year. Ere I forget or die or move away, and we are done forever. By and by, I shall forget you, as I said, but now, if you entreat me with your loveliest lie, I will protest you with my favorite vow. I would indeed that love were longer lived and vows were not so brittle as they are, but so it is, and nature has contrived to struggle on without a break thus far. Whether or not we find what we are seeking is idle, biologically speaking. 
and Augie came in with the side just before the couplet, if I'm not mistaken, and that is the mark of a really, really good poetry dog. <laughs> so I just thought that was great. First of all, because she was introduced to me just because she was on the other page. I mean, I've, you know, I've, I've, I've heard of her before, of course, but you haven't read. Well, no, I've read some in, in, in the St. Vincent Millay, but I haven't read this one. And, and then, of course, the idea of, you know, nothing is permanent. And also, you know, I might forget you. And, you know, I think for me, it's important with poetry as well, not to take it too seriously. Think, yeah, yeah, I might actually forget the name of this poet. I might forget that I read this particular poem in this particular book on August 12th. But it'll come back to me when I meet them again at the cocktail party next year. I'm sure of it. So then what else did I um, want to discuss? So I'm looking through the book and I find Rosebud Ben Oni. And now that is a name that's come up before. I will leave a link to Brooklyn Poets. They are a wonderful online resource if you're interested at all in writing poetry as a hobby or just being in a community of poetry writers. And Rosebud Benoni has been teaching with them for a few years now, and I have noticed that every time, as far as I can remember, she's had a class, it's always been sold out very quickly. So I thought, okay, here's an opportunity. Let me look her up. I'm going to read one of her poems. And sure enough, Rosebud Benoni did not disappoint. The poem is called Poet Wrestling with Why the Heart Feels So Bad. And it's a brilliant poem. I'm not going to be able to read it because it's one, two, three, four pages long. Although, as you can see, the lines are very short. But basically, can I tell you, you can tell from the one poem that this is a poet of unusual imagination. A lot of the poetry I come across mostly outside the Sealy Challenge, <laughs> luckily, has been really, really boring, boring, terribly boring, 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 boring. No imagination. Rose by Ben Oni takes imagination and takes it to the nth degree. Literally, actually, in some of her poems, she has a word or a phrase and then another word or phrase in the part where you would have to the something degree in mathematics. I'm pretty sure she has a science background. Uh, I mean, it goes over my head a lot of the time, but if you do have a science background, check her out as well. This particular poem attracted me because it has a horse in it with a pink mane. There's a plant. So the, I, I just have to tell you the, the story of the poem because it's, ju it's just so exciting. So it starts with the speaker in the poem is a plant who belongs to a lonely woman and grows in her apartment. One day the woman takes the plant and puts it outside. The plant changes into a horse with a pink mane and knocks on the door and goes in. And they have this love affair, but the a uh, horse, of course, is not, well, you know, it's not human and it also hibernates. So it, uh, it's sort of like a, a plant that might die off in winter, but then it comes back. So the horse comes back and eventually, of course, the horse remains immortal. Well, I'm paraphrasing. This is just my understanding of it. But how can you go past that? and not be just delighted, just utterly delighted. Plus it says so much, it says so much about, of course it's in a book on queer nature. So of course, let's, let's just take that in and appreciate all the beauty of it. So I immediately downloaded her book uh, this afternoon, only about a couple of hours ago. It's her latest book. And I wanted to say, if you're in Australia, I mean, I'm not sure if it's Australia, well, I'm sure it's Australia wide actually. I've discovered that there's an app called Hoopla and that would allow you to access via your local library. So, you know, really my local library that's just up the road, it allows me to access uh, online 
poetry books that are usually American and not easily bought at the local bookstores here and it's free it's part of the library you can borrow them for three weeks on your iPad so uh, I wanted to mention that so I got her latest book and have been <laughs> loving it it's called if this is the age we end discovery and it's the blurb is it's a fascinating blend of poetry and science she herself she has a background with a a jewish father a mexican mother she's lived in uh israel i believe mexico and the us and she brings into this book a lot of the Jewish mysticism surrounding letters. It's right up my alley. That being said, it's not only me who's been enjoying her because she's published, published by Alice James Books and I believe that she won the Alice James Book Award a few years ago when this came out I'm sorry I haven't done my homework but I will leave I will leave details and you can you can look it up yourself so so I've only just started I'm losing my light I've only just started reading this book but I will tell you this it is a riot you won't know what's happening you won't really understand very much I would I would equate it to just every time I opened the book, well, I opened it on my, on my iPad. Every time I opened it, it felt like I had just walked off a cliff, just very calmly and in a very beautiful and aesthetically, aesthetically pleasing manner. I just went whoop <laughs> and fell. And then it's basically like Alice in Wonderland. You're seeing things all around you. You're, you're, you're seeing bits of popular culture, you know, everything from Rick and Morty to that bunny that's a vampire. I forget what it's called. You're hearing the lyrics of an 80s song. Suddenly you're listening to the Cranberries. Then you're immersed in, in, a deep dive you're deep diving into physics and the rules <laughs> the rules of physics it's as if you walked into an advanced course at university all of a sudden and you're like okay <laughs> is this going to teach me about the meaning of life and then she comes in again with discussion and exploration of her relationship let's say with her brother or with her father who she clearly just adores who sounds like an amazing amazing man and yeah so that's the world i'm in now it would be ridiculous of me to attempt to finish reading the book and discuss it coherently you know and i'm not going to pretend that that's what i'm doing but i thought i'd give you a very quick snapshot of what the silly challenge has taught me this is something that would never have happened before the silly challenge I would never have pushed myself to open up this book in a, in a free half hour I had. I pushed myself and I said, let's see how many poems you can read. And what it did was it brought me to Rosebud Benoni, among others, fantastic poets. And then if not for the challenge, I wouldn't have pushed myself this afternoon to say, let's see if you can download her book. Let's just see. She's, she's, Sounds amazing. Let's see if she has another poem about this horse with a pink mane. I've got to have more. And I certainly wouldn't have been discussing it now. I probably would have been having a cup of tea and feeling sorry for myself because the day didn't go as planned or something ridiculous like that. So I'm going to end it there. I uh, will be back tomorrow with the last day. I do not know what the last day will hold for me. Um, it's a mystery. But thank you for playing along. I hope that, uh, you know, I've mentioned at some point something that is, has sparked your 
creativity or your imagination. And don't forget, the only real property is the property of the mind. I will see you tomorrow. Ciao.